Netbox is running, or at least it was, and now it's not anymore. So last week I released the YouTube version of how to install Netbox in 10 minutes and the response has been phenomenal. I, I would guess just based on the feedback I've gotten, the number of views I've seen happen on that video that probably thousands of installations of Netbox now exist around the world that didn't before. And that brings thousands of people uh, asking all kinds of great questions like, hey, you know what, Netbox was running and it was great until I rebooted the Linux instance and now it doesn't run anymore. So A, how do I get it running again? And B, how do I keep it running if Linux happens to reboot again? And it's just one of many questions that I'll be responding to. So I'm gonna take this video, I'm gonna add this to, to uh, YouTube because I know it's gonna help a lot of people, but I'm also gonna add it to the training series that I've created on Netbox. And we'll, we'll continue to build this thing out as we go. It's, it's, it's gonna be fantastic. So, so here's, here's, what, here's what we're looking at. I, I had Netbox running on 172.20.0.80, port 8000, but the Linux instance rebooted and now it's not there anymore. So where do I go? Well, first off, know that I am picking up right where I left off after the installation. I know a lot of people have probably done tunes and tweaks, but I wanna grab the people that are just getting it installed and they're like, oh no, how do I do this? So if you've moved things around, if you tweaked, that's fine, just, just kind of feather this into, into your knowledge. And hopefully, through this, you can not only learn how to get Netbox back up and running, but a little bit more about Linux, about Docker, and things like that, right? So, so come on over with me to the command prompt, right? So I just rebooted, I logged in as root, and as of right now, I want to, let me first off uh, show you a key command in Linux, uh, PS. It stands for process status. It shows you, it's kind of like um, if you're a Windows person, it's like the services control panel, like what's running right now on Linux. And you can see not much, essentially bash, like my prompt that I'm using to type commands in and the PS that I just executed. Well, we're running Netbox inside of Docker. And Docker is like application virtual machines, if you will, uh, like VMs for applications. Like, so you, we've got Netbox and all the pieces of it. Um, so we can actually see what process status, what is the process status, or what processes are running in Docker by typing in Docker PS, right? Same thing, and it's like nothing. This is the rebooted state of Netbox, and you can see, you know, here's the container ID, and it wraps around, because I, I had to increase my font so it would all kind of fit in here, so sorry for the, the uh, line wrap, but, um, but a couple, couple key, key pieces. I'm gonna do a quick ls command, which shows the directory. Now, Doing the Netbox install in 10 minutes, we at, we installed everything into the, the root user's home folder, <laughs> probably not best, but it works, uh, in, a, in a directory called Netbox Docker. So I'm gonna do a change directory Netbox Docker, right? And do an ls, and I think I mentioned in the installation, there's, there's a utility we're using called Docker Compose, right? So we're running a script that somebody created, bless their soul, and I'll type in uh, more Docker, uh, docker-compose.yaml, um, and this, this script actually assembles a Docker environment that has a Netbox worker Docker image, an NGINX Docker image, that's the web server, you've got Postgres, that's the database, so you've got all, all the puzzle pieces that, that make, make it work. So, so let me give you the, the quick answer to the question, how do I get it back up and running? Well, the same way that we did during the install. You can use Docker Compose up. Um, I'm gonna put a little ampersand after that and I'll tell you why. As soon as you hit enter, you notice that Docker Compose takes over the prompt, right? And it's, it's starting to get all of these different VMs, if you will, Docker images, uh, up and running piece by piece. Now, um, if you remember my, my little installs running on Proxmox, I, hit, I think it has like 256 or 512 megs, <laughs> megs, not even a gig of memory. So it runs slow, so, get, so give it some time. So behind the scenes, it's actually building all of those Docker images based on the Docker Compose script. So when that's done, that will get, get Netbox up and running. Now, why did I put the ampersand after that? Well, if you don't, it takes over your prompt. It takes over your, I mean, so you can create another SSH session, uh, but this allows you to hit the enter key and get your prompt back. If you leave the ampersand off, you don't get that. And, and I know, I know a lot of you are nin Linux ninjas and you're like, uh, basic? Yeah, that's great. That's, that's what I'm going after. I know a lot of people getting into this aren't Linux ninjas, so, so hopefully this helps. So, so the ampersand gives you your prompt back so you can continue working while this thing's churning in the background. Now, in the meanwhile, this will get 
uh, uh, Netbox up and running. <laughs> it's my, my slow slow machine is still uh, churning up right now. There we go. There we go. We're, we're coming back up. Uh, hey, hey, there we go. Netbox should be back up and running. Let me just go behind the scenes. Maybe get a quick refresh, see if it's there. There we go. Hey, Netbox is alive and well uh, one more time. And, and I can see the, the problem. But that little ampersand lets me keep typing. Because now, and, and let, let me show this. I'm going to type in PS. Notice. Docker Compose is running, and I can do a Docker PS, and it shows all the Docker images that are running right there, right? The reason I'm showing this to you, I'm not just showing you how to get it back up and running, is because as we get deeper into this, and I show you more things like how do you upgrade Netbox? How do you back up Netbox? Knowing how to, how to get a view into this, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something kind of wild here. I'm gonna kind of stretch this uh, past the screen so it doesn't do that word wrap, at least not quite as bad. Uh, so you can, I know it's flying off the screen, but you can see each one of these represents the Docker image. And that container ID is going to be some critical information that we need when we're referencing these in the future. Um, if, if you could see the, the, the piece of my screen that's scrolled off uh, right here, you can see here's the name. So this is NGNIX, right? This is Netbox. This is Netbox Worker. So each one of these represents a Docker image that Docker Compose brought up, right? So that's how we get Netbox up and running. Now, how do we keep it running? Now, let me show you. If I go into uh, this directory, let me do uh, an ls uh, one more time. Uh, you can see we've got all of these, these different functions uh, or different scripts inside of here, directories, things like that. One of these files is called docker compose override. Let me hit the, the ls, there we go, wrap, wrap it around. docker compose override.yaml. So when you, when you run docker compose, it runs this script, and then it's like, this is kind of like, in, in addition to that script, let me add this in, this is the script that runs second, right? So I'm gonna use pico and edit that, and I'll do uh, docker compose override.yaml, uh, hit the enter key, and you can see that it says, hey, we're running version 3.4, services, nginx, and, and I just have a little override here, that tells that service to run on port 8000, right? And, and uh, that we talked about that during the installation. I'm gonna squeeze something in here. I'm gonna hit the enter key, do a space a couple times, and do restart, and by the way, the spacing is important here, restart colon unless stopped. This little command will say, okay, if this Docker image ever stops, I'm going to restart it unless it was stopped by the administrator. Like you come in there and do, you, you can stop it by, I'll show, actually, I'll show you how to stop it in a minute. Because you don't want it to just constantly restart. You're like fighting, you're like, no, stop, no, please stop. So, so unless it stopped, like if the VM just reboots, it'll automatically restart as long as it was running before and you didn't, you didn't manually stop it, right? So that gets the web server running, NGINX, but what about the other stuff? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, put it in here and I'll put it in the text below this as well. Um, let me hit the, uh, go, go down a little bit. I'm gonna copy all of the, the commands that we use for the other Docker ports and just right, right click, paste them in there. I put them in a little text file on the side so I wouldn't have to sit here and type them uh, while I'm showing you this. Paste it in, Postgres, Redis, Redis cache. So all of these, Docker images combined together to make Netbox work. By the way, Postgres is your database. That's, that's a big deal. You want the database running, you want that backed up. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but for the time being, I'm gonna hit Control X, yes, enter. We've now saved, I'll do a, a more, well, let me hit the up arrow, uh, more docker compose uh, override.yaml, hit the enter key, and now you can see a, a picture perfect view of what that override script does, which adds the restart to it. So now I'm gonna do a, docker compose stop, right? And this, this will shut it all down. By the way, that's, I, I was meaning to show you that. That's how you turn off uh, uh, Netbox without shutting down the VM or anything like that. Now, if we go back there, I can do a PS, hit the enter key, and you can see that the, the only thing left is bash and PS running. Docker PS shows nothing's running. So, so that's how we bring it back down, that docker compose stop. Now, when I type in docker compose up, it's going to rerun Netbox, get, get all those, those Docker images up and running, but this time it's going to process that, that, uh, that script. Oh shoot, I forgot the little uh, ampersand command. So now it's, it's gonna steal my prompt. Uh, that's fine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a, a second uh, putty session. 
And there you go. You can see uh, Netbox is running in the background. Now watch, watch this. So I'm gonna, I'm, I brought over another SSH session right here. Do a quick PS. Uh, oh, that's it's just showing. There's nothing running in this, uh, uh, this uh, command prompt. So, but I'm gonna type in Docker PS, and I see all those images that are running. So I'm gonna do a a a, a, a rude shutdown of the VM, right? I'm gonna do a shutdown dash R now, or we could power it off or something. I'm not going to manually stop it because re you remember the, the command I typed in there was restart it unless the administrator stops it. So if I stop it, I, I kind of overrule that, right? So I'm just going to shut it down. Bam. Restart. It says, oh, remote side unexpectedly closed the connection. It's down. And you can see both sides. It's right there. So now we'll come back up here and hit restart session. This is all running in Proxmox. So it goes extremely fast as a container. Uh, so I'm going to do root. Uh, type in my password right there and I'll do a uh, PS, Docker PS, and I should see, I should see if all is well. Hey, look at that. Uh, all of these these VMs have started back up and running. You can see status updated less than a second ago. So, so we have Netbox running even though we just rebooted the VM that it was running on. That's how you can get Netbox up and running automatically. And this video probably took so long. It took longer than the installation in 10 minutes that I showed you. But what I wanted to convey is a little more of the underpinnings through the practical step of let's make sure this thing stays running. So so hang on, just just think about it with me. What what have you learned in, in just, just this little short session about Linux? You've learned the PS command, right? So you can see what processes are running inside of your shell. You've learned about the Docker PS command, right? Uh, so you can see what Docker images are running. You've learned about you know where, where the installation is at, uh, and I think you probably knew that before. But you've learned about the, uh, the, the you know Docker compose command, the Docker compose override. You've learned, I mean, it, it, oh, you learned a lot. Um, and, and through that, you now know how to keep Netbox up and running on this virtual machine that we've created. Keep it simple.